This is the Earth Science Clash and welcome back to the channel. This video is a demo of the World Geo Project, a project the kids do at the start of the year, my students, in my classroom. And it's basically about geography and where things are in the world, major features. And I get the students to hand draw the Earth, the outline of the land masses first, and then label and annotate the map as the project goes on. So there's a reason for that. So the students come into my classroom as ninth grade freshmen in the US and they have some geographical education behind them, but most of them have either forgot it or need a little revision or extra studying. So this project is great because to hand draw the earth and you can't trace it is uh, requires a little attention to detail where things are in the world where the land masses and continents are versus islands and different parts of the world and to have them free draw it with basic grids as you can see right here where I start with Africa in the middle is a great project and this takes usually about two lessons about two hours to complete. So I give them a example of the world map with uh, Europe and Africa in the middle with North America and South America to the left and to the right would be uh, Asia and uh, Southeast Asia and Oceania or Australasia. So as I am drawing the outline for Africa here, it takes about 25 to 30 minutes for me to properly outline the Earth as accurately as I can within a certain time period. I'm trying to recreate what the students will be doing in a regular classroom rather than spending hours and hours and hours getting completely accurate depictions and drawings of the outlines. I'm just going as best I can in the time given. So when outlining the earth, it gives the students a chance to perhaps find out where things are geographically or where a certain mountain range would be positioned or where a certain river starts and ends. And also this helps with this general knowledge of where things are because in the earth science curriculum we do in the class, we go through a lot of different units and different topics that discuss areas of the world different geographical locations, uh, for example, plate tectonics, looking at the Pacific Ring of Fire, looking at subduction zones, looking at mountain ranges and volcanoes, orogeny, looking at the Himalayas and the Himalayan belt of orogeny and the Tibetan Plateau versus the Rockies and Appalachians and the Mississippi River Basin in the US versus mountain ranges and certain river systems in Europe and also looking at atmosphere where certain atmospheric patterns and cells occur based on latitude and looking at certain extreme weather experiences like hurricanes and typhoons and certain tornadoes and water spouts that may crop up and monsoons over in Southeast Asia and Indian subcontinent. So this is very important basis for the earth science curriculum and it's a lot of fun because students haven't done this for a long time if they have done it at all and it takes a little time for them to adjust and try and figure out the sizes too because everyone starts in my classroom with North America and they generally draw it very very large and don't get enough space for the other continents uh, on the map so I did put in the grid system there the two vertical lines to split the paper into three thirds and one horizontal line which is not exactly the equator, but it does help to align. And when you're looking at where things are located with both Northern Hemisphere and Southern Hemisphere. As you can see, I make sure to add in the major lakes in the world in terms of the five great lakes in North America and the large lakes in Asia. And I could also add in the African Great Lakes as well in Central Africa around Tanzania, Kenya and Central African Republic and those areas in there. So uh, again, in terms of detail with Southeast Asia, with the Philippines being around 8,000 islands, again, you know, the detail is not there. So if you're watching this and your own country has not been drawn or depicted properly, I do apologize, but this is done quickly for the students to get a general idea on the outline of these land masses and islands and how to get a feel for where things are generally geographically around the world because a lot of students may or may not have traveled or realized where they were as they're traveling or to look at an atlas or a map or a globe which is very uncommon nowadays you know I grew up 
you know, looking at and reading atlases and maps and maps from driving places to get from, you know, navigating. I didn't, I didn't have any GPS or electronics to help me navigate. I used a map or I just took out a globe and, and figured it out. So again, this is a great experience for students, uh, especially in, uh, in high school. So once the outline has been completed, the next task on the project is to label. As you can see right there, I'm labeling the continents, the seven continents, and I did not make a mistake in terms of the continent in the far bottom right hand corner, that is Australasia or Oceania. I do try and stay away from Australia as a continent because my education in England, the continent is called Oceania or Australasia, not Australia. Now, in terms of details, we add the uh, oceans, the uh, major oceans, and look at the major or large seas that are very uh, well known. So the Caribbean, North Sea, Arabian Sea, Sea of Japan, Coral Sea, um, the Gulf of Mexico. So I could add a lot more, but we had basically time constraints based on lessons. Then we started to add the world or major cities. Again, I chose some around different parts of the world and places like Cairo and Tokyo and Sao Paulo and Paris and London and, and Sydney and Cape Town and tried to have a, a myriad of different cities around the world. Then add in the major rivers. Now again, this is basically trying to figure out where these major rivers start and obviously where they finish with their deltas, usually in a major ocean like the Mississippi, the Amazon, the Congo, Yangtze, Danube, the Rhine and the Ganges. So in conclusion, a fun and educational mini project lasting two lessons, getting the students to engage in geographic information around the world, where things are, major rivers and features, and to start the year off having that base knowledge.